so the the name of the presentation that i'm making today is called story of modern architecture through banknotes uh it's uh it's it's a subject that i got hooked on to a uh, few uh, maybe a couple of years back and it just struck my mind that you know i should be pursuing this subject because i myself i'm an architect and uh, I collect banknotes as well, so I'm passionate about both the things. So, is there? I started to pursue if there is a connection between the two, and uh, as I sort of started, uh, you know, uh, discovering and start started reading about, you know, different banknotes that represent some uh, kind of uh, the modern buildings that we see, uh, and and the story sort of started building up in my mind. And what I'm showing today is sort of a culmination of all of that thought process. And uh, there are some quite interesting facts, some uh, kind of uh, details, uh, which we often don't regard, or we, we, which we don't look into so much of detail uh, when we uh, when we look at a banknote. Uh, so it's just a different perspective to look at uh, look at uh, you know all of our banknotes. Uh, some of these notes are uh, very common. There is nothing uh, rare about them. But my emphasis is on the on the content. Uh, especially which is the building or the architecture that it represents. So, and I'm trying to sort of uh, combine the two and I will discuss it later on towards the end that, you know, what are my thoughts on you know, these two subjects and how they get along with each other. So, so, yeah, so this is just sharing a little bit about myself, who I am. Uh, I'm an architect. Uh, I'm from Mumbai, India. I studied architecture in Mumbai and later in London. That was my post-graduation studies. Uh, I have been practicing as an architect since 2006. Uh, some of the subjects that are close to uh, my, my heart are history, geography, design, culture, and economics. So by pursuing my profession and hobbies, I get to basically cherish all of them in one way or the other. I also, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I do photography uh, and traveling. These are also my hobbies. I like to connect with lots of uh, collectors in, in, in India and around the world as well. I have been part of IBNS since 2015. It's been a really great organization. And, you know, I have connected with so many people and got so many new ideas how to pursue my own collection. Uh, it's really has been a, you know, a great experience. In terms of what I'm collecting right now, I have a deep interest in uh, banknotes of South Asian countries, uh, which is mainly India, where I come from, and the neighboring countries which are around uh, uh, around the India and Indian subcontinent. Uh, then the another hobby that I pursue is uh, another theme that I pursue is countries with small population. So uh, this is an interesting, uh, basically, uh, kind of thing that came to my mind that I belong to a country which has a second largest population, but what are the kind of countries which are, you know, the which have the least population, maybe a few thousand. So what kind of banknotes they make and what kind of things they present on them. Uh, then, of course, uh, uh, the subject that is close to today's topic is architects on banknotes. So architects are basically the uh, the people or the person who was represented on banknotes. That's a, one theme that I'm pursuing. Uh, I also collect elephants on banknotes. Uh, that's uh, to basically uh, have my son get interested into this hobby. Uh, I'm also interested in security and the new printing technologies. So I will share a little bit, uh, very briefly about my collection journey. I started collecting banknotes from 1996 when I was a teenager. Somebody from family gifted me a banknote, and then you know I started collecting it. Uh, and uh, I basically started gathering notes uh, when I was young. But then, uh, very seriously, I started to pursue the hobby in 2014. That's when uh, I, a year later I joined the IBNS. And I have been sort of focusing on different themes uh, since last five, six years. It's been quite fruitful since then. 
uh very recently i also have done some exhibitions of my collections uh in in in, in national level exhibitions in uh, in in india and uh, sometime last year during the lockdown phase uh i have also uh, done some presentations on banknotes of nepal banknotes of least populated countries and architects on banknote on youtube so coming to today's topic this is the whole kind of uh, diagram of what i'm going to talk about today so in the first part which are these yellow dots uh, they are basically i'm going to talk about what's what is modernism and uh, what is modernism in architecture now some of these words may sound like a jargon <laughs> some of them may be architectural words but i will try to keep them as simple as possible so that anybody who is not from a design or architectural background can also understand them if you, please feel free to uh, drop me a question later on if you have any doubts or questions uh, if i may be wrong somewhere please feel free to correct me uh, i can't be perfect uh, and uh, starting from there uh, then we will talk about you know how uh, basically this is a flow that i will talk about uh that how how what, what what was the idea of modernism then what were the new things that happened uh, in 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 world which basically changed the uh, course for a lot of things uh, actually mainly architecture art literature philosophy so what were those things that affected and changed our life basically uh, who were the pioneer architects who uh, initiated this uh, basically modern architecture movement and in the, the these uh, box in the middle basically shows you different architectural typologies which are featured on the banknote so what i have studied is uh, that uh, there are certain type of group of buildings uh, for example parliaments so you have many countries which have showcased their parliaments central banks uh, cultural institutions like museum uh, colleges universities uh, some build, some countries have uh, portrayed their uh, mosques, uh, churches, so religious buildings, uh, airports, uh, so which, which basically come in the transport category. So I will I have I will basically elaborate on each one of these uh, as I go along, and then in the last part uh, I will talk about that what's the influence architecture has had on the design of the banknotes. Uh, and uh, how basically there's a mutual relationship between each other. And uh, so I will start with modernism, origins of modernism in architecture. So very briefly, uh, modernism is a philosophical and art movement that arose from a broad transformation in Western society in late 19th and 20th century. Uh, before that, we have uh, we have seen buildings that have that have uh, that have been shown on banknotes, uh, which are older buildings, uh, pre nineteenth century buildings. Uh, those are more conventional, more traditional buildings. But somewhere from nineteenth century, there was this whole art movement called modernism. Uh, basically, this was need to create new art form. Uh, social organization and philosophy that reflected the new industrial world because uh, industrial revolution was something that started up and new materials were coming in and these new materials uh, forced people to think their life in very different way. So a lot of artists uh, like Pablo Picasso, uh, for, for example, and many other artists, so they were also re-looking at the art in a very different way. Uh, they basically uh, were rejecting realism. So if you see uh, a lot of uh, artwork that was shown earlier, uh, the, the whole idea and intent was to show realism, uh, something which is uh, as close to real as possible. But what modernists did was to do away with that and work with things uh, and break them down to the bare minimum and make them very uh, functional or very minimum, like lines and basic geometrical shapes basic colors and things like that so this idea influenced architecture as well and that's the reason i'm talking about it uh, urbanization is something that started happening in the late 19th century and early 20th century more and more cities started to swell up more and more people were moving to the city so that uh, there was a need of a uh, new kind of uh, uh, you know architecture which happened in cities to support this kind of population and uh, 
so modern architecture is something you can uh, very basically if you want to say it in a couple of lines it's it's basically it, it features like much lighter and taller buildings uh, which was possible using the new materials like steel and iron uh, in modern buildings you also see plenty of light because they use extensive uh, uh, use of glass is there and uh, so i will i will speak about this in detail when we go next so these are some of the new ideas and materials and techniques that started emerging in the world. So these, these set of banknotes basically represent uh, uh, the iron, iron kind of manufacturing and you know the, the people who were working in those uh, kind of uh, iron, iron mills. So these are different banknotes from Qatar, Yugoslavia, uh, even even in India, Indian 1000 rupee note in the background, you see a, a iron uh, kind of factory. Uh, on on the right, you see the Albania banknote, uh, basically where you see two two uh, kind of workers who are working in an iron mill. Uh, the Chinese banknote also showing you know one man in action who is basically working in the factory. The the Swedish 1000 krona banknote, uh, it's basically featuring this. Uh, this this uh, specific technique which was uh, developed there uh, which helped uh, you know to purify the iron in a much better way and uh, it, it gained so much of strength that it was basically uh, it could become a building material i mean before 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 all this happened uh, the buildings were made using wood and stone and it had its own limitations so uh, this is the Clydesdale Bank 20 pound uh, Scottish uh, banknote. And the reason why I'm showing this is because it features uh, this uh, town of New Lanark. Uh, it's a Scottish World Heritage site. It was inscribed in 2001. Uh, so this site uh, basically consists of uh, cotton mills and uh, basically housing for the mill workers who live there. Now, what was uh, very special about it was that it was uh, uh, founded by David Dale, he was an English inventor, and Richard Arkwright. Uh, and Dale's uh, son-in-law was Robert Owen. Robert Owen was a Welsh uh, uh, philanthropist and a social reformer who developed the new Lanark further. Uh, his ideas were about uh, to to have a social reform in the way uh, the workers would work and live in this kind of new society where they also get equal share. They get a uh, good kind of city and good kind of place to live uh, which is close to their workplace so it was more about bringing social change and bringing more dignity so this particular project is is a landmark project for uh, something that we call today as urban planning you know it's it's one of the first uh, it's the first time where uh, you know such an experiment was done and it became so successful that you know later on even till today people are adopting uh, the ideas which are basically uh, put into this uh, the reason i put two notes together is to show you know the how the kind of the image uh, merges together and you can see the whole building if you keep two notes uh, next to on top of each other so who were the architects uh, which uh, started you know uh, developing this idea of modern architecture further one of the most important is uh, the swiss french architect Le Corbusier. Uh, he's regarded as pioneer of modern architecture his career spanned over five decades and he's built almost uh, in most part of the world in every continent and the most uh, he's considered to be you can also say that he's, he's considered to be the father of modern architecture uh, most of the work we are we as architects do today uh, we draw ideas from his initial works so this simple diagram that you see uh, basically on the uh, just below my text uh, is it just it just shows that you know there are three uh, basically planes of uh, slab or the roof which are supported by these thin vertical columns and a staircase which is connecting it it's it's it looks something very simple and it looks like an unconstructed building but this was the first time that he came up with this idea and it was called uh, a domino structure now this domino structure is made out of steel and concrete which are the new industrial products and what he did was that there is no walls 
uh, there are no walls and uh, because there are no walls the, the the load of the building is taken up by the concrete columns and you can fill the whole uh, kind of empty space with glass or any kind of uh, light walls which you want so this basic idea was taken up by uh, lots of other architects who came later on and imagine that this particular you see a two story house here but the same model can be stacked on top of each other 100 times and you get a 100 story tower i mean very very basically you know that's the idea that stacking of this kind of building was possible so he showed the ways in which uh, by which you could uh, design uh, like a skyscraper or a building which which basically does not have any walls inside so this was his landmark contribution on the swiss banknote uh, or uh, basically which was issued uh, around 2000 uh, it, it it on the on the reverse side it shows uh, a certain small bits of uh, his designs which he had done for chandigarh in india so Ch city of chandigarh was uh, uh, after india got independence in 1947 uh, they, they, we have a state of uh, state called punjab and half of the punjab went to pakistan and half of the punjab was given to india so the capital city of Lahore went to uh, Pakistan. So there was a need to create a new capital. So Indian prime minister called him to design this new city. So he's made almost all the government buildings there. So the one on the right and one on the bottom, you see, uh, they these images are represented on this banknote. Uh, these are the the, the assembly building of uh, Chandigarh in uh, the state of Chandigarh, uh, state of Punjab in Haryana and uh, the, the high court building over there. Uh, the other architect I would like to speak about is this uh, Finnish architect called Alvar Aalto. He's regarded as amongst the first and the most influential architect of Nord Nordic uh, modern modernism. Uh, he's, he has designed several notable buildings and furniture pieces that have become international icons and they are used even till today. Uh, most notable feature of his building was the use of natural light, how it comes inside so uh, on the on the on the reverse side of this uh, finland 50 marka banknote you see this concert hall uh, which is the finlandia hall uh, that's one of his most iconic uh, project Uh, this one is not uh, a circulating banknote it's actually a test note from jessiki and devrian uh, this banknote features one of uh, a most notable kind of architect called Ludwig uh, Mies van der Rohe. He was a German-born architect who moved to America later on. Uh, he is considered to be a pioneer of modern architecture as well. Uh, some of his most notable buildings are the Franz Wolf House, which is uh, which you can see on the reverse of this note. Uh, it's uh, and I have also shown the photo of that note. It's it's kind of a floating ho floating house which is hovering above this ground and you know a construction like this was possible using the new materials uh, like steel and uh, kind of concrete and everything virtually the house has no walls and everything the entire house is covered with glass uh, some of his other famous buildings are uh, the seagram's building uh, and also the barcelona pavilion in spain so i would i would speak about the the specific categories now uh, so one of the main uh, important uh, categories parliaments most of the most many countries uh, have displayed or show, showcased their parliament buildings on the currency notes uh, because it's something that uh, uh, it's, it's a, every every parliament is basically an icon for that particular country and people take pride in that and uh, the most important thing uh, you know i would like to mention here that uh, uh, in the middle, I'm showcasing uh, a banknote, which which basically uh, uh, showcases that image of that building. On the right, I will I have written a few things about that building, and on the left, I have show I have put a photograph of that architect, uh, whose face may not have been uh, included on these banknotes, but their works. Uh, these are their works and uh, often what you will see i have also written the country of origin of the architects uh, those are the architects who are responsible for designing that building for that country so i would also like to draw a connection between 
that how architecture is something which is an international thing you know the, there is no kind of boundary when it comes to designing a building for some country you know uh, for example uh, the, this bangladesh 1000 taka uh, has the, their national national parliament building showcased on them uh, it was designed by an american architect called louis icon it's also uh, regarded as one of you know like a very respectable and notable architect for his works so it's it's kind of very similar to the banknotes as well you know the kind of banknotes that we see uh, you know you see like like thomas de la rue printing banknotes for some xyz countries it's a very international thing so i i see some parallel over there the way architecture design industry works and the way banknote design industry works there is some parallels are there so uh, so bangladesh p59 banknote uh, it shows it shows the, uh, the their parliament building which was it's a concrete building that represents the bengali culture uh, and heritage with its simple and geometric forms and it has very functional spaces inside it's 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 something very minimal there are no pieces of decoration or something extra like an attached kind of element which is to decorate the building because bangladesh was a new country they needed to showcase their simplicity and have a very functional and efficient building at the same time uh, in the next banknote is malaysia p26 it's 1000 ringgit banknote uh, from 1983-84 uh, uh, Malaysian Parliament was designed by a British architect called Ivor Shipley, who worked as uh, he worked in the PWD uh, department of Malaysia at the time, and he has been uh, he has designed uh, this particular Parliament and some other buildings as well over there. Uh, these buildings have been designed as a specific uh, grid, which are developed by Shipley. A uh, grid is basically the kind of uh, different kind of uh, lines on which you know you put the structural elements so you see that all the windows are of same size uh, if you see from all around and uh, the the facade consists of concrete elements that protect the interiors from tropical sun and rain so the modern architecture also showcases this as one of the most important thing that uh, how to protect the interiors from the tropical sun rain effects of wind etc you know these these elements were not there uh, not not so much considered when uh, buildings were considered uh, when buildings were built earlier. Uh, Brazil shows uh, works of Oscar Niemeyer, uh, their capital uh, capital uh, national congress of Brazil and presidential palace is showcased on their uh, uh, this this banknote P two zero five. Uh, Australia, uh, Sudan. I will not go too much into detail of every banknote. Uh, I will touch upon where I feel that some important things uh, I, I can mention over there. So the Australian Parliament uh, uh, has been featured on the five dollars banknote. The Sudan uh, hundred dinars showcases this uh, their national assembly building, which is uh, which is designed in this style called brutalism. Although the name may sound uh, very kind of uh, scary to some, uh, but simply to to put simply brutalism. Did you like kind a of... song very really well heard? Sorry about that. No. That was my Alexa, which just started. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, so brutalism is uh, uh, a kind of architectural style where the the concrete is not finished it's quite rough if you touch the building in there it has a very rough texture uh, it has very bold and kind of very uh, impactful elements attached to it. Uh, it it was it was a post second world war style you know which was adopted in many countries during 1950s and 60s uh, people like that kind of style at that time after the war yeah so uh, on on kuwait uh, 10 dinar banknote you will have you can see their national parliament which is uh, designed by the Dani uh, danish architect john Utzon. john Utzon is the same architect who is also designed the sydney opera house some reason my next is slow
the royal bank of scotland uh, ha has issued this commemorative banknote uh, about scottish parliament building it's the you can see the old building and the new building uh, next to each other on this banknote the new building basically has a diagram kind of thing it's not the actual picture but it's basically the top view of the new parliament building and uh, uh, it's 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 designed by a Spanish architect Enrique Mirales. Uh, my pronunciation in Spanish may be may be a bit wrong. Uh, pardon for that. Uh, and and the most important design features are this complex curved forms with lots of skylight and uh, cast uh, precast concrete walls and wooden interiors. And uh, a thing about this particular building was told by you know a quote I would like to mention. Uh, which was by uh, Charles Jenks, he's a landscape architect. He said, a two-day force of arts and craft and quality without parallel in the last hundred years of British architecture. So he, it, this building is considered to be a remarkable building. Even, even after many years, I'm sure that, you know, people will regard uh, this building as something, you know, special, which was built uh, in our times. Uh, then yes, Indonesia uh, uh, 100,000 uh, rupiah banknote showcases their uh, parliament building, which was uh, designed by a local Indonesian architect. It was meant to be for some other purpose, but due to political changes, you know, it was converted into a parliament building. On the Kenya current uh, series 200 uh, shilling banknote, you have you see this tower at the background. Uh, this tower was designed by a Norwegian architect. It's, it's called Kenyatta International Convention Center. So the purpose is that it's also a convention center plus the uh, place for the local parliament to sit there. Some reason I'm not able to yes then go to next slide. Uh, this Sri Lankan banknote shows the Sri Lankan Parliament. It's designed by the Sri Lankan architect Jeffrey Bawa. Again, a very famous architect. Uh, he he was. Uh, his, the speciality of his buildings were that uh, he used to blend his building in nature. So you will see a lot of uh, kind of natural uh, forest or uh, kind of things around his buildings. Uh, this is a very modern building, but it looks like an old a traditional Sri Lankan building. It's also one of the very few parliament buildings in the world which is rectangular in shape. Normally, the parliament buildings and assemblies are circular or oval in shape. Uh, this one, I think the uh, yes, the British Parliament is also a rectangle in shape where, you know, the two, basically there's a central aisle and the seats are on opposite, people face each other. Uh, normally, in all other uh, Parliament buildings, you will see an oval shape or a U-shaped kind of arrangement. Uh, some cultural buildings. Uh, Azerbaijan issued this uh, beautiful 200 Manat banknote featuring this Haider Ali Center. It's a cultural center which was designed by a uh, very famous uh, uh, contemporary architect called Zaha Dichi is an Iraqi-born architect. Uh, 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 she attained British citizenship. Uh, her signature style is using these bold curves and not using a straight line anywhere. So uh, it's 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 really a remarkable building, you know. And it's 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 it it has found its right place on this banknote, which is really amazing. Uh, Belarus uh, show, showcased uh, this particular, uh, their national library, uh, which is in the city of Minsk. It's designed by a local Belarusian architect called Mikhail uh, Vinogradov. Uh, the most important, the most important thing about this building is, is, is its shape. You know, this particular shape of this building. Uh, in, in English, it's called Rombi Cuba. They had drawn. I sorry. I have, I would have pronounced it wrongly. Basically, it's a shape that has eight triangular sides and eighteen square sides. So, a combination of that is a particular this kind of shape, uh, which is the tower, uh, and it's uh, it it basically houses the the library building. 
uh, the new series of Qatar uh, on 200 riyals shows uh, three different buildings, uh, which is two of them are very modern. Uh, so one of them is designed uh, by this Chinese American architect I.M. Pai. Uh, that's the 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 Islamic uh, Islamic museum that you see on the on the background. And on the front, you see this kind of building, uh, which is. Uh, uh, you see these kind of discs which are intersected with each other. It's the Louvre. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically the National Museum of Qatar. I'm sorry, and uh, it's, it's it's a remarkable building. And all these buildings have come there in uh, basically which are to support the FIFA World Cup that is likely to take place in 2022. Uh, China issued this banknote in 2000. Uh, to to celebrate this uh, millennium, uh, it's the China Millennium Monument. It basically shows this pointed needle kind of tower and the steps leading on to this building. Uh, they wanted to make an iconic uh, building to celebrate the year 2000 and also showcases. So a banknote banknote was issued for that. Uh, the Singapore uh, Brunei issued a joint issue a couple of years back uh, and. Uh, uh, not a couple of years back, actually in 2007, it shows uh, on the Singapore side of the note, you see the, the Esplanade theatres. These are two dome kind of uh, structures, the very iconic structures in, in Singapore, if you go there. Uh, it, it's it, These are two domes with uh, uh, these triangular kind of fins attached to it. These these basically are sun breakers and also allow you know the view across the bay. Uh, from French Pacific territories, you have these two structures, uh, which are in this, this kind of curved hand shaped uh, buildings. These are also uh, designed by Italian architect Renzo Piano. Uh, this, uh, in, in, again, a very famous architect is built extensively in Europe. Uh, this particular project is uh, a mixture of blend of modern construction techniques and also the traditional styles of that particular island over there. I have uh, I have this uh, a pair of banknotes from Scotland. Uh, this pair happens to be uh, I, I will just first say what these are. So a Scottish twenty pound banknote which was issued last year. Uh, it features uh, uh, Kate Cranston, uh, who is considered to be the patron of Scottish modernist architect Charles Rennie Mackintosh, who was featured on the other banknote a few years ago uh, on the Clydesdale hundred pound banknotes. It's the only pair. Uh, where who are actually they have relationship of an architect and his patron uh, and this only architect patron pair has been featured on both have been featured on the banknotes the project that they were working on this famous uh, tea rooms of uh, Glasgow city uh, so Kate Cranston was uh, came from a family where they produced lots of uh, kind of food items or bakery items and she developed these specific tea rooms where you know, people could come and socialize. So uh, they became quite famous. These tea rooms became quite famous. And it was the Macintosh who designed them for her. So his work also became quite famous because of these projects. And uh, uh, one on the left is uh, uh, is the Canada $10 banknote, uh, which uh, shows this uh, Canada Museum of Human Rights designed by American architect Anthony Fredock. Uh, uh, you see two different dis distinct style of architectures there. One is this curved glass uh, kind of uh, facade on the top and this kind of very solid and rocky kind of base at the bottom. Uh, I'll speak about some transport uh, facilities which have been featured. So some of these are airports. Actually, most of them I found were airports. Uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, ten, uh, five uh, Denomination banknote features this uh, the the Dharan Airport terminal in Saudi Arabia. It was designed by this Japanese architect Minoru Yamasaki. Uh, it uses traditional Islamic style of building, and it it is combined with the modern construction techniques using concrete and long span structures with steel, etc. Uh, this building became a landmark, uh, kind of uh, a benchmark. For many future buildings uh, that came up in, in 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 the countries around in Saudi Arabia and also in Saudi Arabia, uh, that how a traditional beliefs and traditional ideas can be clubbed with the modern buildings. So this uh, project became a landmark for that. 
uh, Afghanistan, 500 Afghanis uh, shows this uh, airport building, which has this curved arch structures. Uh, this was uh, a, an airport designed by an American firm in 1960s called Pacific Architects and Engineers. This was the time when both America and Russia were trying to, uh, you know, have their influence uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, so in Kandahar, the American firm helped them to uh, build this uh, airport, which uh, which became it's it has seen many kind of historical events. Uh, I won't go much into detail of that, uh, but uh, it's it's quite significant building for Afghanistan because it was one of the first modern buildings that came up over there. Uh, Hong Kong shows the new airport, uh, which is the Che Lok Kok uh, Airport, which is the new terminal building uh, uh, designed a few years back. It's designed by this British architect Norman Foster. He's also designed the Apple Apple headquarters and the Kirkin in London. He's a very famous architect. Uh, another very important theme that we see is uh, countries representing their uh, central banks. Kuwait has uh, presented it. Uh, Hong Kong has done that. The Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation (HSBC). Uh, the the Bank of China building has also been shown on their uh, the banknotes. Uh, the Scotland showed Royal Bank of Scotland showed their new. Uh, Basically, a new bank campus on 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 their banknote on this fifty pound commemorative banknote. Uh, bank of China did that uh, for their recent uh, commemorative issue. Uh, some of the educational buildings are also featured. Uh, this is from Tanzania. Uh, this building features this uh, uh, the the Nak Nakruma Hall, which is located in the University of Dar es Salaam. It's named after the first president of Ghana, uh, who uh, in this building has this curved elements which are intersected with each other. It building is so famous in Tanzania. It's it it's got this uh, status of national heritage. It came in the list uh, a few years ago. Uh, uh, this fifty thousand uh, riyals from Iran shows these two entrance gates. These are entrance gates to Iran University. Uh, uh, designed by some unknown art students as their art project, but over a period of time, this uh, th these particular gates became uh, icon of the University of Tehran and also uh, by uh, also as a icon for the country also, uh, and they have been featured on their banknotes. Uh, some other banknotes also featured them. Uh, these are some of the religious buildings. Uh, so you have one from Sudan where. Uh, this particular mosque of Masjid Al Nilgiri was, uh, which is actually mosque of the two Niles. It was designed by a local architect. He was a student, and he presented his thesis project, and it 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 was liked by the president, and the president decided to ask him to come and you know help them build it, and it became a real project. It's it's got featured on this ten Sudanese dinars. Uh, Malaysia has their national uh, mosque featured on the banknote. So as Pakistan, uh, Pakistani mosque is called Faisal Mosque. Uh, it's designed by a Turkish architect, and it's named after the Saudi King Faisal. Uh, some trade and business uh, buildings have also been featured. Uh, this one is one thousand US dollars. Uh, sorry, one thousand dollars from Hong Kong. Uh, it features the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center, the Malaysian one, Malaysia Five Ring. It shows the Petronas Twin Towers. These Petronas Twin Towers were the tallest building when they were built. Uh, the UAE uh, 100 uh, dirhams uh, from 2003 uh, shows this uh, the Dubai World Trade Center. It was 39 story uh, tower. At that time, it was one of the tallest building in Dubai when it was built. Uh, Saudi Arabia, the ten Riyadh shows this new skyline of the uh, Riyadh city you know, with the tallest tower in the middle. Uh, it's called the Capital Market Authority Tower. It's the tallest building in Riyadh. It's uh, 385 meters tall. Uh, it's designed by an American firm called HOK. Uh, uh, one very unique thing uh, is this Cambodian banknote, which shows a market building. You know, I have, I have this. I think perhaps is the only banknote which shows a market on uh, their national banknote. Uh, this market is special because it was uh, built in 1937 by a French architect, and uh, it was 
at that time the largest indoor market in Asia. It has this giant dome in the middle and these kind of arms which are going out, uh, which is about two or three stories tall. Uh, it's a 26 meter tall uh, dome structure inside. It, it, it's quite a big marketplace in uh, Phnom Penh. Uh, some sports buildings that have been featured on the banknotes, uh, very famous uh, Beijing National Stadium, which is also called as Bird's Nest because of its appearance. Uh, it was designed to be part of the, is a part of the Beijing Olympics. Uh, Qatar is going to host the FIFA, next FIFA event. They have made uh, quite a many of uh, the new stadiums. This is, this is their main stadium, which features uh, this traditional style of uh, uh, kind of uh, weaving, uh, weaving of the uh, uh, traditional Arab art of uh, weaving of a bowl. And uh, the Malaysian uh, 50 ringgit shows the national stadium, uh, which is also home to the Malaysian football team. Uh, this particular banknote was issued by Russia when it hosted the last FIFA event. Uh, if you keep two banknotes next to each other, you will see this combined image at the bottom just be behind the denomination uh, that uh, it's basically uh, the, the, the Luzhniki Stadium, which is the largest football stadium in Russia. It has a capacity of about 90,000 people. And the final match of the FIFA was also organized at this particular stadium. Uh, we can see some monuments. Uh, Iraq 25 dinars uh, features this uh, monument, uh, which is the split kind of dome structure. It was it's a martyrs monument uh, which was built after Iraq Iran War. Uh, yeah, then you have this very famous um, monument Eiffel Tower uh, featured on this 20 uh, 200 uh, francs uh, banknote that was the last series of uh, pre-euro banknotes. Uh, on the Iran 200 Rial P103, you see the uh, the, the Azadi monument, which was uh, designed by also a, a college uh, student, uh, Hossein Amanat, and he sent his entry for the competition and was uh, selected and he got to build this. Okay. So the next, uh, I'm coming towards the end of my uh, uh, kind of presentation now. Uh, one thing uh, I want to now speak about that: what is the architecture? Uh, what is the influence of architecture on banknote design? Uh, this particular series I want to sp speak about. This is the Danish, uh, uh, the new, uh, the new, uh, not the Danish, the new banknote series of uh, Norway, and. Uh, uh, this banknote is very bit controversial as well because some people don't like it, but some people absolutely love it. You know, this features this pixelated uh, design on the backside, uh, which represents the motion of the sea and wind and the marine life, which is quite close to the Norwegian culture. Uh, this banknote series, uh, the reverse side is designed by an architecture firm actually, uh, Snoheta. And uh, uh, although I mentioned Denmark there, but I'm sorry, this is uh, Snoeta is a Norwegian architecture form. Uh, and uh, this is perhaps the only banknote series in the world which has been designed by an architect or architect's office. So you see a lot of architectural uh, design influence on the banknote design over here. Uh, this previous series of Aruba also has some influence of architecture. Uh, all the designs in the background you see are this kind of diagonal or a diamond shaped uh, geometry. And uh, uh, then there are abstraction of that. Uh, this is very architectural element. Uh, this diagonal grid is called diagrid. The architects call it diagrid. It's basically a diagonal kind of crisscross lines. Uh, it's very efficient uh, kind of geometry to build structures out of steel. So you will see you will see many buildings which feature this kind of uh, kind of diamond shaped uh, structure. And I see that you know this has been a direct influence uh, on that design. Uh, you know, so I, I personally consider it that you know it's it's an architectural influence on the design of that particular uh, banknote. So who could be the future candidates on uh, notes that we may see in the future? Uh, 
maybe the tallest tower in the world, which is Burj Khalifa. Next set of uh, UAE banknote may feature them. Uh, Guggenheim Museum, uh, which is in Spain. I'm not so sure that it may appear, but it's a worthy candidate because it's very famous museum because of its very strange uh, volumes. Uh, maybe also uh, the, the world's largest airport, which is almost built now. Uh, it's the new Beijing airport. It may also get featured on some future uh, banknotes because uh, some of these countries take pride in uh, you know the, uh, their architectural work that they are doing. So I'm coming to last slide now. What's the conclusion? So architecture and banknotes are two different uh, uh, these spheres and uh, they both serve a functional purpose in our life and they are most accessible to common people. Uh, most human beings around the world would use either or both of these in their normal day-to-day -day life. You would either, you are sitting inside a building, yes, you are using a piece of architecture. You are using money, yes, you are using a piece of banknote. So uh, the both are very interwoven with our lives. Like most of the people will use either or both of them on any normal day of their lives. They both are the oldest creations of mankind. Uh, both concepts are very old and both have been used over the years. And their method of use has evolved, but their use will not cease to exist. Uh, buildings have evolved, architecture has evolved uh, with new influences, new ideas, but it has stayed. It's, it's, it's an ever evolving kind of process. I can say it's same for banknotes also. The, the concept of money may change, the materials of money may change, uh, the idea of how we use money may change, but it will stay. Uh, you can't say that you know these will uh, uh, disappear one day or it will cease to exist. Uh, banknotes or money are needed to build architecture. Of course, it's a common uh, sense, but architecture can also create opportunities to generate more banknotes or monies. You know, their relationship is quite mutual. You know, they help uh, each other. Uh, banknotes and architecture can influence each other's designs and also help each other's cause to uh, beyond the functional need. Uh, they both uh, do serve a different purpose, which is to sh share the idea, share information because they're accessible. Uh, as I said in the first point that they are very accessible so you can show a thing on a banknote uh, a picture on a banknote or a message on a banknote and you can easily reach out to everybody who uses it uh, same goes with uh, architecture it has architecture uh, can propagate subtle ideas amongst the people who access it uh, designs of architecture and banknotes can convey a message of positivity hope and a brighter future uh, they both can uh, have that potential that uh, they can spread uh, positivity and hope. Uh, if you see a, a banknote which has a certain building that your country has built, yes, you will feel proud about it. You will feel aspirational about it. You will feel quite good about it. Uh, so this is my conclusion that uh, both these things are very similar in a way. Uh, uh, they are very different. But in my presentation, through my study, I have tried to put them together and uh, show uh, my understanding of the two topics. Uh, I will myself continue to pursue it and find more ideas and more connection, try to build more connections in future. And I'm sure that many of you may have some ideas to share and I'll be you know, happy to learn as well. So thank you. You can reach to me on my email address that's been provided here. I'm also on Instagram. And thanks to uh, you know the whole IPNS team for setting up this talk. Uh, uh, especially, uh, uh, you know, uh, this we have many lectures on the IBNS YouTube page. Please like and subscribe it. And I'm sure that uh, uh, we all are doing a good job here to share some knowledge and uh, uh, many more to come in future. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dermesh. Uh, interesting. Um... Well, I'll open the uh, space to questions. If anyone has uh, questions uh, for Darmesh, please uh, unmute yourself, ask and mute yourself back to avoid the uh, echo and background sounds, please. So, or you can use the chat and just ask questions, then I will uh, relay them to Darmesh.
the PS, we have no question, uh, Darmesh, for you. No problem. Uh, can you guys unmute yourself? No. Okay, hold on. Uh, I'll unmute Chris. Uh, Cedrian, you want to ask questions too? Chris, hold on. Chris, hold on. I, I don't know what is going on. You should be able to. Um, it's more of an observation because I have to say, Daesh, thank you for your um, presentation. I found it interesting because I have a, an interest in architecture. Um, not as, as as because my main from bank notes, but architecture. But it's interesting. Um, the uh, the banknotes from the Scottish issuing banks you were pointing out, uh, particularly the one pound uh, Royal Bank of Scotland commemorating the establishment of the Scottish Parliament. Um, yes. What I found what you were saying quite interesting is that out of all the banknotes you were presenting it only showed an initial plan of the design and it was quite interesting as you know it was quite yes. co um, quite an interesting sort of quite controversial yes quite it was inter try quite it interesting was. because the architect unfortunately passed away before the building was before. complete true that's true um, because you see the building on the side um it's what's quite interesting was it was the um was used as a temporary base before they moved to the permanent Scottish Parliament building in 2004 um, because now it's, well, it's still used as a building part of the Scottish, um, the Church of Scotland, I can't, uh, the Anglican Church of Scotland or what, that. Okay. The, but I was going to say, so I'm digressing off, I do like to waffle a bit, but I was going to say one of the things, I don't know if you've noticed, um, it's more more older um design the modern sort of architecture but you notice the design element on the above um, yes the uh, lantern in the uh royal bank of scotland's um what's the word um head branch um what's quite interesting is because it's on the above the feature on the the paper series the previous paper series what i found quite fascinating was that they were planning to use that sort of but what I find quite interesting is these the designs with architecture, how they incorporate elements from yes. the architecture. What I found quite interesting was that um, what's the word that they were planning to incorporate that sort of element in the polymer series. It was a proposed design, but they were going to use that as the clear window of the stars that was part of the lantern in the right. um, and I. It, it's quite one of these things where us uh, people who have an interest or collect banknotes would love to yes. see some of these proposed designs. But one of the features that you, you definitely know is with the Bank of Scotland notes, how they incorporated from the p previous paper series to the current polymer series, how they've incorporated the windows of the Bank of Which Scotland. Which are transparent, yes. Yes. But... Um, one of the things I was, you was mentioned about was Charles Rennie Mackintosh, and I was quite fortunate. Um, I was involved with the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, and before then, I wanted to visit Glasgow. I live in Kent um, near London, but I want to see it. And it, it's quite a shame the Glasgow School of Art. I went to, had a tour around there and had a tour around the Glasgow School of Art, and was very lucky to go around there before the first fire happened yes. but it's fascinating yes. as you were pointing out on the hundred how they've incorporated some of the features very slightly next to the side of charles rennie mackintosh's portrait included in the name play. I, I, I don't know if you had the opportunity to visit some of those buildings in glasgow and uh the mackintosh no I, I haven't i haven't been there i would definitely I would recommend to. um particularly um, as you say, the Willow Tea Rooms, because when they issued yes. the new 20 last February or beginning of March, I went there on the day to pick up the new note and went from the, um, the what's it called, St. Andrew Square branch, where I went on the day to uh, the Please, Willow please. Tea uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I'll, sorry I'll to stop. No, uh, a, a question, a question. Oh, question. We, need, we need to, um, we need questions. question for I say, 
Uh, my question I'll say to Armish, um, what elements on um, Scot uh, banknotes you quite find interesting, the incorporation of architectural elements on the design, as you were pointing out in one or two of the slides? Yes, okay. So, uh, very interesting observations also, Chris. Uh, what I have I have also noticed that in many of the designs, especially in the British designs, uh, there are smaller details and features of that particular building or the design onto the banknote. Even on the English 20 pound uh, banknote, uh, there's uh, on the reverse side, you have uh, the, the, the James Turner's uh, picture, the painting. And on uh, there's, uh, in, I think in the clear window, you have the, the uh, uh, I may be a bit wrong there. Uh, the the museum or the Turner Library. Oh where, yeah, I uh, think I know what you're saying. The little purple patch they incorporate. Yes, the, the purple patch is. Yes, the, yeah, it's um, the staircase Tate design. Britain, in Tate Britain, yes, yeah, yeah, it's in the Tate Britain. It's the staircase design which is used as a purple patch uh, as a security feature. So it's quite interesting. The designers choose to pick up small elements from the building uh, design, actual architecture and building design, and use them over for the uh, banknote design. Uh, I only spoke about the modern architecture today, but there are many other examples. Uh, there's a there's a Swiss banknote, uh, 100 uh, Swiss francs. Uh, it it basically uh, represents uh, uh, this Renaissance period architect and. Uh, a lot of their building designs are also used as a background design in on the banknote. So uh, these kind of things are uh, I, I have noticed some, uh, but I'm still looking at you know more examples of how uh, there are connections between the architect who's featured there or the building which is featured and what sort of uh, ideas maybe a flooring pattern or some window pattern has been used in the design. So yes, there are many examples. I have also come across uh, several. Thanks Amish, for, I have a question for from a question from Hakim. Yes. Uh, do you also collect notes focusing on other periods and styles of architecture other than modernism, like collection of ancient architecture, for example? Uh, uh, well, not at the moment, because uh, uh, what I came to know was that buildings are very common element on the banknotes. Yes, a certain a theme or a collection like that is possible. But I am not pursuing that as a as a detailed theme. I am I am only focusing on modern architecture because I find it more relevant because these buildings stand around us. Me being an architect is also involved in uh, building some kind of uh, you know design. So I find uh, modern architecture more relevant. So it's uh, it's it's pursued by me. But yes, uh, this kind of theme is possible uh, of any other style, say Islamic architecture or. Uh, any any ancient like cathedral architecture, uh, such kind of specialized themes are possible to collect. There are many many examples available. Thank you. Uh, more questions, guys. I think Cedrin Cedrin wants to ask. Cedrin, Cedrin, you cannot unmute yourself, no. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Sidran. Hey, hey, Darmesh. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I think it was really interesting. I, I actually, I, uh, I, as I wrote on the on the chat, uh, I like to look it again and, and complement the information for for my own collection database. I think that something that you did right now is is a very close study of the details. I think that much of us, most of us, uh, actually collect notes, but not necessarily pay attention to every single detail, and and that's really a, a, a something that uh, I like very much from from your presentation. And as you just said, uh, each category of the building actually merits a talk on on itself. I was wondering whether you have seen. A specific nationality because you you basically showcase architects from all over the world. But I was wondering whether there is any 
nationality that is more present and and who could be the the architect that is most present on on modern banknotes i think that no i saw the the name of norman foster uh, several yes. times i don't know if he's yes. uh, he's the one uh, but, he but who else who else has been repeatedly uh, used in different uh, countries banknotes yeah very interesting observations edwin yes you pointed it correctly uh, norman foster uh, has designed several buildings and uh, his i think three or four of his buildings are featured on different uh, banknotes around the world uh, two from hong kong uh, uh, the the uh, the hsbc headquarter and also the the the, the hong kong airport uh, he i think he's featured three or four times if i'm not wrong uh, the other second would be uh, this Chinese American architect I M Pai. Uh, he's 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 designed the you know the museum in Qatar and uh, uh, several other two three other buildings also. So I M Pai and Norman Foster their work has come uh, has been featured uh, several times. So I would I would say these two. More questions, guys? Chris, I am mute you, but ask the question. Eh? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I didn't do this on purpose. Somebody must have changed the setting. This is a, um, a common uh, a program for the FBNS. I mean, these are uh, web. Uh, so maybe the setting will change and I didn't realize. Hold on, let me find. Okay, Chris. Really? Um, one of the notes I, you featured was the um, the dance, uh, the the German, um, what's it called, promotional note with that uh, German American architect. Um, yes. Could you tell a little bit more about that um, design or what? Because I found that's quite an interesting promotional note that I've not, I've, I've seen before. It's, but uh, I'm looking for that banknote to be honest in my collection. Uh, it's a reference image that I've used. It's a it's a test note issued by uh, Jesse K. and Devriant. Uh, and uh, uh, he was a German architect, so they've used uh, his image. And the, the banknote also features uh, uh, this art college or art school called Bauhaus. Uh, yeah. Bauhaus yes, he was one of the director of one of the Bauhaus uh, uh, schools. Uh, in it, it was, I think it was present in three different cities in Germany at that time. And Bauhaus school has a great influence on modern architecture because uh, the people who uh, studied over there, uh, they went around the world and taught many, uh, taught at many other different places. Uh, their art and also the architectural style was uh, perceived very well uh, around the world. Even even till today, you know, we refer in architectural circles like we'll read our history books and there'll be a huge chapter on Bauhaus and what they did. Uh, uh, the architect Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. He was uh, uh, one of the most influential uh, in that sense. Uh, uh, and some of his buildings are like, uh, like very popular. He's, he, he later went to, uh, to, to the US and uh, he was responsible to build many skyscrapers there, uh, which, which are still standing today and used widely. Thank, thank you. And uh, can I pass something on to you if you're interested? I'll be very brief, with Fabrizio. Don't worry. I'll be very sure. Brief. Definitely. Yes. Um, you know, you were saying pointing out about the polymer twenty that came out last year. Um, I don't know if you knew, but around the outline of the clear window, it's the outline of one of the fountains in Trafalgar Square. So looking from oh, the it? air. Yeah, um, it's one of these features I, I find with the Bank of England. They haven't. They, there's so many obscure elements in the designs that, or very, um, very um, subtle. Not, subtle. That's it. Subtle that I haven't mentioned. And definitely look out for the new fifty coming out next or the sure, end of yeah, this month. I'm sure there are some because hidden features. I, I'm trying to look contacting the designers, but there's one or two elements in the clear window in the right hand corner and around the, the red frame. 
that is referenced to Bletchley Park and their um, architecture there. I don't know if you might find interesting, but um, for, again, sure. thank you. The presentation it, it opened my eyes to different areas. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. I have one more question from uh, uh, Hakim. Uh, he wants to know about the Norwegian series, which uh, uh, were designed by the architecture bureau, whether you know by any chance how they become involved in this. Just decided to do something else or something deeper? I mean, do you know anything behind the, yes. the story uh, of these notes? So this was a, a design competition. And uh, uh, from what I have, gathered from uh, what I had read some documents uh, that uh, the, 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 the Norwegian bank, they ran a competition uh, to design this new series of banknotes and they ultimately selected two different, uh, uh, they shortlisted two basically companies or designers to make them. Uh, so from the initial designs, uh, Snoheta, who, which designed the river side uh, of the banknotes, which I mentioned, they had also designed the front side in a similar way. And the front of the banknote that you see today is from an another uh, uh, kind of a designer. So they, there was no agreement uh, amongst the jury that which one of the two we should put. So they decided that, you know, we will actually use one side front, uh, like a front from one artist and the reverse from the another artist. So the front of the banknote is very conventional. It uh, is very traditional in a way. Uh, it also talks about the same marine and ocean theme uh, and how it blends with the Norwegian life. And the reverse talks about the same things as well, but it's been portrayed in a very modern and futuristic way. So the whole uh, discussion came up that uh, it was decided by the jury at that time that one face of the banknote represents the past and uh, the belief in tradition and the reverse side is looking forward into the future. So uh, the Snoheta uh, architect, uh, architecture firm is all, they also run a graphic design studio. So hence, you know, they uh, participated in this particular uh, competition. So I, I, I hope I answered Hakim's question. Yes, Hakim is, uh, is actually sending his thanks. More questions, guys? Sidrian has mentioned something in the chat that Astana has some great buildings designed by renowned international architects, and maybe yes. one of them is from the architects you mentioned today. I, uh, Sidrian, I need to check that. Uh, it came up, I, I, I checked the notes of uh, Kazakhstan, uh, but honestly, I didn't get much into detail because uh there are a lot of buildings which are featured as in a silhouette or in the background i i need to check you know who they were designed by and uh, who are the architects who are responsible for them I, I i need to do some study over there shall i try to unmute all see what happened I try to unmute all. If uh, we have too much echo, I will uh, mute everyone back. Let me see. No, cannot. Somehow some settings have been changed before we started it. So I still need to ask Chris. I see you raising your hands. Okay. Chris, I I am I am mute you. I want the I want the. <laughs> I want the questions, not the story. Oh, que no question. I was going to say it's about the twenty pound note, and I forgot because it's actually got a bit of modern architecture with Norway, Norway. But um, one of the things that I found quite interesting how they incorporated the uh, Turner Contemporary Building in Margate by the Norwegian um, architects and the lighthouse that's um, added because I live in Kent, and that's just on. But how they. Um, Durasafe incorporated that, but that's more of an observation. Sorry, I just for <laughs> no, that's an interesting one. I will check that for sure. Uh, I I knew that there is a, a modern building featured there, 
uh, but I didn't probe it so much in detail. Yes, in the silhouette there at the at the background, the blue one. Fabrizio, you did unmute everybody from the host point of view, but every individual has to unmute themselves also. Which so we can now, now do. Eventually, eventually you are able to unmute yourself if you want to ask questions. All right. So go ahead, feel free to unmute yourself. Chris, you can unmute yourself only for questions, eh? <laughs> You have another question. What was the, the, the most pleasant surprise that you found uh, on, on a banknote? So in terms of architecture, which, which banknote actually showcased the best building from your point of view? I think that you, you talked about the, the Aser, Aseri 200 uh, Manat I am uh, very passionate about. So I don't know if that was the, the best note from your point of view, uh, the, the best uh, building reflected on a note. Uh, yes, very good question. Uh, personally, uh, uh, the uh, that the Haider Aliyev Center on Azeri 200 Manat is one of my favorites. Yes, I have also put it on the front of my on the first slide of my presentation. Yes, and it's been depicted beautifully, rather than you know as obscure background on the reverse side. It's the main hero of that note. It's it's the you see the banknote on the front on the center, and uh, it's it's on its you know full glory. So. I like the way it's been represented as well. Uh, the designers chose to sort of give it the central importance on that uh, banknote. I appreciate that. That's one of my favorite. Uh, in terms of architecture, uh, the Scottish Parliament building is one of my favorite uh, buildings as well. Although it's been shown in a very abstract way, it doesn't show the uh, you know the true picture of what it is uh, through the banknote. Yes, that one what Chris is uh, showing right now. Uh, in terms of architecture, it's, it's one of my personal favorite. It's absolutely gorgeous building. Very controversial, yes, but in terms of an architectural style and for and what it is, uh, what it stands for, it's really amazing. Just this is a question: Did you visit the Scottish Parliament building? Because I've been many times before. <laughs> No, we being an architect, I, I wish to visit most of the buildings go, around the world. Go, but, go. Uh, I, I would, yes, yes, yes. Okay. I would, I would love to go there. It's a bit difficult to visit parliaments, actually, to be honest. Oh, it's, it's this day. It's, it's 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 all when the pandemic is over, or mm. when, whenever that's over. But that the Welsh Parliament building is another good one. I'd recommend um, the Senate. I'd recommend visiting. But again, thank you. Thanks. Any more questions or comments from anyone? I have a question. Uh, do you see um, any Indian um, historical buildings on banknotes at like the Taj or any of those other lovely uh, architects in ancient uh, India? Uh, uh, Roger, thanks for uh, thanks for the question. Yes, uh, India has uh, uh, actually, if you start from uh, almost also from the British India uh, in early Republic India banknotes, they they feature uh, quite a lot of architectural buildings on them. Even the current series of uh, India features this heritage architecture uh, on its uh, starting from the ten rupees almost. Uh, the 2000 rupees does not have but 10 rupees to 500 rupees banknotes uh, they do feature the architectural uh, heritage uh, these buildings are very old uh, i have not seen any modern building uh, featured on the indian banknote but yes there are many examples of indian uh, banknotes where uh, the the theme is architectural and the building itself uh, but no taj mahal it has not yet been Presented on any banknote yet. I think uh, Eastern banknotes are more ancient stuff, more ancient banknotes than uh, buildings other than modern buildings. Most of the Eastern banknotes. Uh, Dr. Kaman, your voice was breaking. Uh, you were mentioning about. 
But I'm saying that each person is building their future in the building. Yes, that's right. Uh, but actually, I did not find such kind of uh, the East and West divide. Uh, what I found was, you know, a lot of developing countries, a uh, lot of the, uh, you know, uh, like they want to showcase, you know, what they are doing because it's something that they're starting from the scratch and uh, uh, the new buildings are something which are very iconic and they want to showcase them. So uh, many of the lots of developing countries have shown, uh, represented their uh, new works, new buildings on their banknotes. Uh, they are also from East and West. Yeah. but. Uh, if if I see European countries, most of the countries have shown traditional uh, uh, heritage because there's a very long history of uh, architectural heritage over there. Uh, but I I would say that there's no east and west over there. Actually, you know, modern architecture is a very global thing. It's a very international thing. Like what you see that lots of architects are from some other country. They have practiced in some other country and they have designed buildings for some other country. It's a very international thing as well. Thank you. Yes, Adrian, the, yes, the new Egypt museum is also, can be a new candidate on the Egypt part of we can possibly see it. Let's see. Can you see, um modern architecture where you can distinctly say this is an Indian influence uh, or a, a South Asian uh, influence in terms of modern architecture? Uh, if I get your question correctly, uh, you spoke about if I can say that uh, there's an Indian influence on a particular building or a particular banknote of Indian, Indian architecture influence. Correct, uh, uh, because uh, you can you can talk about modernism, but uh, I'm just wondering if there's a particular Indian influence in architecture. Uh, well, there is uh, modernism is almost hundred years old, and around the world there are a lot of sub uh, sub themes and sub kind of uh, branches uh, in, in, in modernism. Uh, same has been in India as well. Uh, so there's a particular kind of modern architecture that you will see in India, which is more responsive to the climate and people, their cultural aspirations and uh, traditions. Uh, but I have not personally seen uh, that kind of influence on any banknote design, especially in India or somewhere else also. I have not seen that. Bruce here. Can you hear me? Hi, Bruce. Yes, yeah, I can. Um, yes, I can. You, haven't, you haven't mentioned anything about U.S. banknotes, probably for good reason, because if you're familiar with the architecture on U.S. banknotes, it's basically four federal buildings that uh, have remained unchanged for over 90 years. And my question is, is that kind of a world's record for the same architecture on a banknote, 90, 90 some years? You got any notes that can beat that U.S. record? <laughs> a very interesting observation, Bruce. Yes, it maybe it's a world record. Yes, that uh, the same building has been shown for nearly a century. <laughs> yes, Thank but you. actually, if 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 U.S. was to redesign and decide that they want to uh, not design their banknotes in a very traditional way and they want to modernize them, there are hundreds of examples to choose from because uh, US was like a, a laboratory to experiment uh, modern architecture, you know, especially uh, there are hundreds of examples like Chicago, New York, uh, these these places where like the experiments were uh, like experimental labs for architects to come there and, you know, they, they could do what they want. So if, if US decides to modernize the look and feel of their banknotes, yes, there are hundreds of buildings to choose from. Well, in all honesty, that's that's probably very unlikely because uh, you know, US banknotes have sort of been an international standard. And 
you know, every time there's a, even a small change going from a large small head to a big head banknote, you know, the personalities, uh, you know, people are very suspicious suddenly of the small head notes. So they're not going to be changing their bank notes every, you know, 10 years or that sort of thing. So I think I think what you see is there to stay for for the long run. One question, or last question, <laughs> but this time it's quite fascinating that um, quite controversial, but uh, I noticed you not mentioned anything at all about the euro banknotes, as it's quite a controversial set of notes between us collectors or in people interest, but it, uh, particularly on the, 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 well, the notes themselves. What, what's your comment on the uh, design series that they've implemented on the second series? Oh. The the uh, I should have uh, actually I could have mentioned the five hundred euro banknote or in my as a part of my uh, you know presentation also uh, the as we know that you know the ten euro uh, five euro all the way till five hundred euros different banknotes uh, showcase on the front they showcase the different era of architecture styles so uh, the five euro which is the smallest denomination it shows the oldest. Uh, kind of style of architecture and the 500 shows the modern architecture now, possibly the 200 are... as well the 200 is in that sort of modern mod like 20th century yeah, just uh, just uh, yeah 200 i'm not sure which particular style of architecture that is uh, but i for i i know for sure that the 500 uh, does represent mm. the glass and steel buildings uh, which uh, it's not uh, anymore which, uh, not anymore. Yes, uh, I was talking about the previous uh, oh, yeah. series. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so yes. The, so as as the denomination increases, uh, the the timeline of architectural style goes ahead, all the way from uh, maybe say thousand years ago till till the twentieth century. Uh, I, I think it's a very interesting uh, way to show the uh, the different architectural styles on a banknote, which is used by so many countries and different kind of peoples and they have their own history and uh, their own cultures so and, and also uh, the the features that are shown they are uh, uh, they are hypothetical they are not actually the real images or the real pictures of any particular building such uh, and on the reverse you also have the bridges so all the bridges are hypothetical all the windows and doors that you see are also hypothetical but the style of that design style has been represented so you feel that yes i would have seen this building but if you try to find out it doesn't exist it it, it doesn't belong to any particular country or uh, a particular place or an architect i think that was intended and it was mm. a quite a good move because uh, you wanted to they wanted to erase the individuality that uh, you know when you want to blend in so many different people from different countries together uh, you don't want to give an importance to a person like a, like a, no, no. an X country or a people of you know Y country, so that somebody else will say, oh, we also have something. Why have you not shown it? Mm -hmm. So this whole idea of showing a hypothetical uh, kind of images was 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 quite radical and I think quite successful as well. Thank you.